On April the 4th this year, the government's car drove north out of Beijing. In the passenger seat was a man embroiled in a huge corruption scandal. Illegal land deals, secret payoffs, embezzlement of public funds. He was the city's deputy mayor. He came here in his car and was dropped off. He went up that little hill and the car turned around and went back to Beijing. The deputy mayor was facing the death penalty for his crimes. So he walked into the forest, smoked two packets of cigarettes and shot himself through the head. The deputy mayor's suicide here blew the lid off a scandal that's exposed the corrupt core of China's government and administration. And it's triggered the most sweeping political purge in Beijing in almost 20 years. At the heart of this scandal are the most powerful political families in the country, the people the Chinese call the princelings. The princelings are the children of China's leaders, people like Deng Rong, daughter of the man they call the paramount leader, Deng Xiaoping. They're the new elite. At the opening of Beijing's prestigious new meeting place, the Capital Club, Deng Rong is the guest of honor. Her attendance will ensure that the others rush to join, because in China, business connections are the key to success. Deng Xiaoping has declared that to get rich is glorious. His family has embraced that decree and now controls an empire worth billions of dollars. My purpose in coming to New York on this occasion is uh, for the publication of the English edition of my book, Deng Xiaoping, My Father. Uh, it took me three years to write this biography of my father. I'm very delighted to see so many members of the press here today. Uh, in China, we call reporters uncrowned kings. And of course, kings are those who are high up above. So actually, maybe we should change places. You should be up here on the platform, and I should be down there on the floor. Deng Xiaoping's family, Deng Xiaoping's son and daughter can, can have, I want to have position and people give it. The rich people will be the real master of this state. The, what is the revolution? They forget. Princelings are the second generation of China's revolutionary families. Their fathers established the People's Republic in 1949 to end privilege and oppression. But the communist leaders immediately seized privilege of their own. They made their homes in Zhongnanhai, the centuries-old imperial living quarters next to Beijing's Forbidden Palace. The princelings grew up here guarded by Imperial Lion 
and soldiers with bayonets. Their compounds surrounded by high walls and shielded from public view by a screen that reads, Serve the People. The sons and daughters of the party bosses attended the finest schools in the country, as their children still do today. They were taught by trusted party cadres and brought up to inherit the revolution. But today, some of these young princelings and many ordinary Chinese are deeply unhappy with the privilege and power bestowed on the children of the revolution's leaders. used to be as a very quiet uh, street and lots of very important people lived among the ordinary people. Uh, the ordinary Dai Ching, people now one of the Communist Party's most vocal critics, is a princeling herself. This is in 1950s. The adopted daughter of Marshal Ye Xingyang, a key ally of Deng Xiaoping. She grew up in the privileged world of the princelings. And uh, I think in 1950s, nobody imagined Maybe one day I can use this kind of privilege or this kind of name to, to make themselves rich. Only we are, we are going to be a very important person for the party and for the state. But in 1966, the princelings' lives, along with the rest of the country, were turned upside down. The aging chairman Mao launched the Great Cultural Revolution to boost his waning influence and restore the country's flagging revolutionary zeal. It was 10 years of turmoil. Most of the leadership was purged, the princelings and their families thrown out of their compounds and banished to the countryside. The chaos only ended with the death of his twisted and tarnished revolution. It was then that Deng Xiaoping rose to power and launched a new revolution of his own, an economic transformation that would turn the country around and allow the princelings to seize back the spoils of power. The main change in China is the, uh, the power commercialized and the, uh, the money become power. So who are they serving now? Serving themselves, <laughs> serving the family, try to shift the state's money to abroad and become their own money. Yeah. The new head of the Deng's dynasty is Deng Xiaoping's eldest son, Deng Pu Fang. He's nicknamed the crown prince and generally treated like a king. His visit to Australia last month with a troupe of disabled performers was a VIP affair. You, uh, you honour us with your presence. We hope that this will not be your last visit to Sydney. Deng himself was crippled by Mao's Red Guards during the Cultural Revolution. Today he travels the world as chairman and chief fundraiser of China's Disabled Federation. But his fundraising has been tainted by accusations of underhand dealings and corruption. Mr. Dung, there is a perception that you and other members of your family use your position and your father's name to promote your own business interests. I myself was never involved in business activities. Since I am fully engaged in my service for disabled people, I have little interest in doing business. In the 1980s, there was a big scandal over the nature of your fundraising, and the company that you headed then was accused of tax evasion, profiteering, and illegal trading. Have you changed your fundraising activities since then? I have a very clear bookkeeping system that accounts for every single penny I raised. Not one penny was spent for purposes other than the disabled. My fundraising activities have stood the test of time and won the people's trust. Mr. 
家有一个共同的愉快的晚上。Let Let me share with you this.